Namaste and good evening. First of all, when it comes to yoga, yoga is not a religion. It is a spiritual science that has been practiced and developed over thousands of years. Archaeological evidence shows figures in yogic postures from the Indus Valley region that date back as far as 3000 BCE. Yoga is also mentioned in various Vedic literatures, such as some of the Upanishads, including the Katha, Shvetashvatara, uh, Tatariya, Matriyani, Upanishads, as well as the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Purana, and others, all of which date back thousands of years. Therefore, yoga was known many years before Patanjali. Although he is often given credit for it, he merely codified it in his Yoga Sutras, which is the text many people are aware of and which is said to be a, have been written somewhere between the 4th century BCE and the 4th century CE. In this way, it should be clear to anyone that yoga and meditation have their origins in the Vedic system, which some call Hinduism. Furthermore, Hatha Yoga is also described in such early texts as the Hatha Yoga Pradipika uh, by Yogi Swatmarama, and the Garanda Samhita by the sage Garanda, and even the Shiva Samhita. Lord Shiva is said to be the originator of the system found in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. This is a, a highly regarded by the Nath tradition founded by Gorakshnath and his teacher Machendranath, who was accepted to be a disciple of Lord Shiva, by the way. Yogi uh, Gorakshnath uh, wrote the Goraksha Samhita as well. A later text on yoga is also known as the Hatnaratnavali by Srinivas Bhatta Mahayogendra. Uh, thus, without this ancient culture, there would be no yoga pro process as we know it today. In the yoga tradition, the Vedic tradition, yoga is also the application of the Sankhya system. The Sankhya philosophy is another of the Vedic systems originally explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam by Lord Kapila. It analyzes such factors as spirit and matter, the creation and development of matter, how the world evolved, how false ego causes our identification with matter, and bondage to the material world, etc. The goal of this system is to understand that the real self, the soul, is eternal and free, but because of ignorance the soul identifies with what is temporary and therefore suffers. Release from existence in the material world is reached through spiritual training and meditation on the real self and super-self through the practice of yoga. In this way, Sankhya is the theory, while yoga is considered the practice. Hatha Yoga is one of the first types of yoga in which, with which people become acquainted. However, it is not a separate system of yoga as many people seem to think. It is one of the eight steps of Raja or Astanga Yoga. Nonetheless, it can be used separately if only for helping keep the body and mind fit and in shape if one wishes to do that. The word Hatha consists of two bija or seed mantras, namely Ha and Ta. Ha means the prana or energy flowing within the body and that which is associated with the sun, while Ta means the mind or mental energy or that which is associated with the moon. Thus Hatha means to bring in balance the energies of the sun and moon or unify the vital energy of the body with the mental. This opens the door to higher consciousness which culminates in samadhi or deep trance during meditation if one continues to develop it to that stage. With the use of hatha yoga the body can become more subtle or what is called a yoga body. The purpose of yoga is to suspend the flickering nature and internal dictations of the mind. Being free of the dictates and influence of the mind would allow one a glimpse, at least a glimpse, into the spiritual reality that was discussed in the Sankhya system. So yoga is also to attain relief from the pain that uh, exists from such things as ignorance, which brings attachment, which then leads to the way to fear and hatred and especially the fear of death. The practice of yoga and renunciation is for bringing freedom from such pains and suffering and allowing us to enter our natural state of never-ending happiness and bliss, which is the normal condition of the soul, our real identity, which everyone is ultimately searching for. Everyone wants that happiness and bliss. Otherwise, what is the use of living? In any case, the Sanskrit root of the word yoga is yuj, which means to bind, link, or unite with the object of our meditation. Thus, it is to unite the mind, the intellect, the will, the body, and the soul to God, or the jivatma to the paramatma, the individual soul to the supersoul, through, of course, the discipline of yoga. Furthermore, 
The word religion comes from the Latin word religio, which also means to bring back or bind to God. Thus, there is no difference between the goal of yoga and the deeper goal of religion. However, yoga does not depend on a church or our connection with an institution, though that may help and is recommended in particular situations. Neither does it depend on a strict dogma, but it goes beyond all that. This is the Vedic system. The goal of religion may be to reach heaven, but the goal of Vedic spirituality, from which originates the yoga system, is moksha, or liberation, from all forms of materialistic limitations, or a reawakening of our real spiritual identity, and even entrance into the spiritual dimension. The purpose of any true spiritual path is to raise our consciousness to the point of allowing us to directly perceive the spiritual strata. Being spiritual means to recognize one's spiritual identity and practically see the transcendental essence of all others. It also means to see that we are all parts and parcels of God and to respect each other in that light. That is one of the higher goals of yoga. To proceed in this way, we need to understand that all things that are spiritual function on a higher plane of existence, one that is hardly perceptible by our mind, intelligence, or senses. The spiritual dimension can only be detected when our consciousness reaches a higher level of awareness beyond the influence of the mind and senses, beyond material forms of logic. So, yoga is meant to fine-tune our consciousness so that we can receive or perceive the higher vibrations of the spiritual strata. The point is, as I have often said, the more spiritual we become, the more we can perceive that which is spiritual. That's the whole purpose of it. So as we develop and grow in this way, the questions about spiritual life no longer remain a mystery to solve, but it become a joyous reality to experience. It becomes a practical part of our lives, and how to reach that level of perception is supplied in the Vedic methodologies that have been preserved and handed to us by the previous sages who have also used them for their own development and spiritual experience. And that is what the Vedic process has been giving to humanity for thousands of years, and what is offered in the proper use of yoga and meditation. The benefits of yoga are various and numerous, of course, and on the mental level, for example, it strengthens concentration, determination, and builds a stronger character that can more easily sustain various tensions in the materialistic world. The assortment of asanas or postures also provides stronger health and keeps ills such as diabetes, high and low blood pressure, etc., away or in check. It improves physical strength, endurance, flexibility, back pain, digestive disorders, and arthritis even. It promotes detoxification of the body, toning of the muscles, and relief from stress and anxiety. Certain diseases can be prevented, or at least improved, by performing yoga on a daily or at least regular basis. When you progress in yoga in this way, you can feel the unwanted burdens of the mind fall away, such as anxiety, anger, greed, envy, hate, discontent, etc. Then other qualities like peacefulness, tranquility, contentment, and blissfulness will be felt. These are the natural qualities of the soul which everyone is trying to find and are some of the many things that can be accomplished with yoga. It kind of like peels away to our real essence of what we are. So as we continue to develop in yoga, we separate ourselves from the general vibrations of selfishness, selfishness, greed, and anger that often pervade this planet. But we also contribute to the uplifting vibrations in the social or mass consciousness that this world so much needs these days. If we all can continue to work in this way, there could be a major shift in planetary consciousness for the upliftment of humanity, everyone, for the greater good. Thus our own spiritual progress becomes a positive influence on the whole planet. The process for attaining a closer attunement or relationship with God is further introduced in my video, The Secrets of Bhakti Yoga, which you can see here. And a more full explanation of the yoga process is provided in my books, and much more spiritual information as well is provided uh, on my website. And books such as Yoga and Meditation, Their Real Purpose and How to Get Started, will give you a full explanation of the yoga processes and what is best to accomplish and how best to accomplish it in this age. So please visit my uh, website, look over my books. Uh, this is why I've been writing this information for the benefit of everybody else. And I sincerely wish you a hearty good luck 
on your spiritual path. In the meantime, Jai Shri Krishna. Thank you very much.